Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Megs on the broadcast. Today we're talking esports and blockchains with State Senator Ben Keekeffer here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program State Senator Ben Keekeffer of District 16. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Um, you got me very excited during session uh, when you were talking about uh, esports mm -hmm. and the potential for esports. And one of the things that was just a striking thing was to have an esports event um, at Allegiant Stadium. You said not only could you fill the stadium with 65,000 people, but you could fill every convention center within the area at the same time. And I just thought that was a mind blowing number. Yeah, depending on the event, certainly. There are um, just hundreds of thousands, millions of fans um, that attend these events on an annual basis. And uh, both online and in person. So it provides um, sort of multimodal platforms for um, the promotion of Las Vegas around the world, but also to attract an entirely new set of visitors to our city for the first time. And um, I, th I think there's still immense potential for that. All right, so you were trying to get um, its own authority, uh, uh, kind of like the Athletic Commission. Mm -hmm. It ended up going to <coughs> the uh, Gaming Control Board, correct? That's correct. All right, so, um, after t talking to you, I got very interested in this because I knew what esports was probably 15 years ago, maybe even more. I'd read about South Korea and how many millions of people were watching uh, these uh, matches online. And it was an astonishing number. And I thought at the time that maybe some of the Northern Nevada casinos could band together, get a bunch of uh, PCs, put them in the convention center, and invite the top players from the West to come in and play. Absolutely went nowhere. Okay, that's fine. Um, what has stunned me since then in doing a little investigating, actually quite a lot of investigating, is how little uh, people know about esports. A, at the legislature, uh, B, 
um, that uh, even in the gaming industry, there was a major article from CDC Gaming Reports uh, a couple of weeks ago um, that said that s most of the casinos that had tried to put on esports events had failed in one way or another, which was kind of stunning. Um, and th there's knowledge in Southern Nevada but a great lack of knowledge in Northern Nevada. There are lots of schools involved in Southern Nevada. Uh, UNLV is involved in Southern Nevada. Um, up here so far, there's a little bit of activity at UNR, zero at Truckee Meadows Community College. Mm -hmm. Western Nevada College is trying to put together a program now, feeling that it will um, attract students um, that will come in for their regular classes and then have a reason to stay beyond that. Are you surprised with something that is such a huge thing around the world that there is this lack of knowledge um, in our state? Well, we're catching up. And I, I think that there are, um, there, are, there are interested parties throughout the state, both at the higher education level and at the K-12 level. I've spoken with President Sandoval at UNR uh, about uh, his interest in developing um, esports ecosystems within the campus. It, it certainly, as you said, creates a sticky environment for students who um, are, are attending for school but have another reason to stay and be involved in campus activities. Uh, but I've also spoken to parents and others who are interested in, in doing it at the high school level and even the middle school level who um, see that it's an active way to have um, their children engage in activities with other, other kids their own age, um, in intramural activities. Um, and while um, it's not like the IA has a um, has parameters set up for a league yet, there are private organizations that have high school um, competitions outlined, and um, I think that you're going to see more and more momentum on that front. So um, we are playing a little bit of catch up as compared to a place like Korea, but um, I think we're in a good spot, and uh, we have the opportunity to to, to really move forward. Um, one of the southern states that my colleague uh, uh, contacted through their uh, 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 collegiate uh, group, um, sports group, um, said that they had 450 schools uh, that were actively involved in that state. And I, I'm forgetting which state it was, but it was a southern state. Uh, but it seemed like there were other states that were, you know, well ahead of us on that. Um, what struck me, uh, the more I, I talked to people about this, especially at Western Nevada College, was there's a tremendous opportunity um, for businesses that need engineers of one kind or another, that you have people, if they're playing these esports and teams, um, that they have incredible hand-eye coordination that would potentially lead them to being really good in engineering. And we need people to go work at Switch and Google and uh, you know the other companies that are up here, um, Tesla, um, who are all looking for engineering types. I, am I wrong? This is you know, potentially a path for those kids, for these companies to come in and find the best kids and, and take them in. Well, certainly, like, like any other sport, very few people are going to become professional esports play gamers, right? Right, so right. E but e I just athletes. mean that, so, that particular but, but talent you need. Sure, well, well I think you're going to find um, people who are potentially more computer savvy, right? More um, interested in the technology that has brought them the sport that they love. So I think you're more likely to see people who move into that space. But the esports ecosystem as a whole also provides immense opportunity for economic development growth in our state. When you think about the fact that these are basically technology companies, right? They are people who are building software, building hardware, um, online um, platforms and systems for um, tournament organizers and broadcasters and things of that nature. So um, the amount of work that is available to people who are interested in esports um, is immense right now. Uh, if you go on some of the major publishers' websites, the, the, the amount of job listings is substantial. So um, what my interest is pr primarily is bringing those companies into Nevada to create um, new jobs and new oc economic opportunity for the people in our state. Um, for those folks who uh, may, like I, had no clue really what it was, um, had heard about it but had not seen it, uh, you can go to twitch.com and see games being played uh, by these various teams with commentators and all the rest. I mean, uh, share, if you will, just uh, you know where your enthusiasm came from. You know, look, I came to this purely as an economic development effort, right? But what I, what has actually happened with me is um, that I have um, taken a liking to a certain, a couple of certain games that I will go on and now watch other people play, and it's a lot like watching someone play baseball. Look, I stink at baseball, right? I couldn't hit a 50 mile an hour fastball, um, but I love the sport. And so, f for for people who play these games, watching the best in the world do it. Um, 
um, is thrilling and exciting. And um, so I've, you know, I've started playing a couple games with my kids. And um, what I have found is that when I go online and watch the people who are the best in the world play it, um, I have immense respect for what they're able to do. And um, it's it, it, it's an entirely new experience for me, but one that um, I think other people can appreciate. One of the things that's interesting um, is Luxor has an esports arena, mm -hmm. uh, but in recent published articles, uh, folks were saying that you know the the audience there is 16 plus, um, and so it's not really the casino's main category. But I'm thinking that that's a way to grow your audience for the future. E you know, even if you capture them at 16, uh, maybe the parents have got to be there to uh, either support them or drive them there or pick them up. Um, there's potential for food offerings. I mean, it's not like Las Vegas at this point um, is only about gambling. Uh, I, and obviously there is huge potential if you can get the gambling side legalized. Um, but, you know, if you bring somebody in for a meal these days, they're making as much money on the food as they are on the gambling. Mm -hmm. The HyperX Arena is a participatory environment as well as a spectator environment. So you can, as a player, enter tournaments there. So I think you're getting a lot of um, younger people who aren't of the age to gamble who want to participate in these individual, individual tournaments um, in a variety of games. So um, that's bringing a younger audience. But it's, but it's you know, you got to think about esports as um, similar to any other sport. That, that organic um, enthusiasm and participation is what's going to drive the upper echelons of the sport itself. So people playing those games and having an incredible venue like the HyperX uh, to actually go out and, and, and play in um, will help build the, um, the fan base and the ecosystem long term by ensuring that there are um, you know, more people who are enthusiastic and um, giving them the opportunity to participate. Are there major uh, groups in other countries, um, that uh, business groups, uh, that would have an interest in coming to the United States and expanding their operations here because obviously they have a jump on us that we don't have. And, you know, it was interesting, Phil Satry on commenting on the passing of John Esquaga was lamenting the fact um, that corporations run the gaming industry at, rather than individuals like John Esquaga um, who were able to create their own energy from having elephants on stage and all these other things that uh, uh, John was able to do in his career. Well, you know, there are, I think that as esports evolves, um, a bigger and bigger player in esports is going to be wagering. And it's going to drive eyeballs, which much as daily fantasy sports did for some, some, some really boring baseball games in the middle of the season, right? Uh, so I think that um, what we're hoping to do now with um, the advisory committee to the Gaming Control Board is establish um, leadership on how um, wagering should happen on esports long term. And as that happens, if we can position Nevada as an industry leader and thought leader for wagering on esports, then those corporate entities that are providing that, that wagering platform um, would, would like to be in Nevada and certainly be licensed by Nevada um, as, um, as, a, as a platform for wagering on esports. And I think those sorts of corporate entities um, should find a happy space here. Um, have you had any discussions with other states in the United States about esports e and uh, perhaps uh, some kind of joint effort? Because we've seen lotteries, for example, in this country uh, where one state, it doesn't really work that well, but you combine 10 states and suddenly you've got billion dollar prizes. Yeah, you know, I haven't talked about that specifically because I think it's important for Nevada to maintain its own authority and autonomy for um, gaming regulation and uh, leaving that in the hands of the Nevada Gaming Commission and Gaming Control Board. Um, and that's where I see the sort of happy space for this. When you talk to your colleagues at the legislature about this, um, did they know what you were talking about? Some of them. Look, I've got some young colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but, but, you know, there, there, was a, um, there was an interest. I certainly had some people come to my office who wanted to, you know, play some games and figure out what we were talking about. Um, and some people just went right over their head. But, um, look, we're all generalists, and I don't expect everybody to know everything. So, um, there, there, but people were certainly interested. And when you started talking about the numbers um, that, you know, the total audience for uh, a League of Legend, Legends championship was 60 million people worldwide, um, that caught people's attention. And the idea that um, we could have that type of audience be attracted to our state uh, was attractive to them. See, that's your lead. You know, and we buried it all the way to the end of the segment, man. Uh, but that's the lead, 60 million people in just one league. One event. One event, right. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll hit another one of your topics after this timeout. 
7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NB Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your furnace breaks down today, we fix it today. Why freeze for days while your furnace is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get warm again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 and we'll fix it today. That's 323-5585 or online at nevadaheating.com. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator Ben Kiekheffer. So one of the other things that was you know, has been a big deal for you over the last few years has been blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. um, there was, you know, a lot of excitement and discussion about uh, the idea of the company Blockchains LLC taking a part of Story County um, uh, and, and creating their own county there. Taking that aside, because that seems to, uh, it's now at a commission which um, a, a well-known legislator said, ah, a commission, that's where bills go to die. Mm -hmm. um, but, but blockchain technology is a whole different thing. And, um, and, and I was curious, because it seemed like at the, at the session, again, a lot of legislators really didn't understand what blockchain technology is. I, you know, I've said it uh, to you and to others, uh, that to me it's a sophisticated form uh, you know, of accounting, and that's the easiest way for a regular person to understand this. Mm -hmm. um, but how much knowledge did people have about blockchain technology? Are they scared of it? Are they in favor of it? Do they see the potential that you have seen in this technology? Well, I think we've seen somewhat of a bell curve, Sam. When I first sponsored the bill in 2017, um, people had no idea what I was talking about, and they were pretty honest about it. Um, look, I was still new to the subject back in 2017. Um, when I started preparing the bill in 16, that was when I started learning about it. So it was, um, it, it was a, it's was it been a learning curve, and I think you saw an immense amount of hype about the technology itself and what it could potentially do. Um, and some of that has now died down a little bit in terms of the hype, but they're in that, um, in that uh, sort of quiet, period, a lot of work is being done in developing new applications and new um, uses for this technology, which is still incredibly powerful and is, um, you know, often, most often talked about in the, f in the space of cryptocurrency, but um, really has applicability in just about anything that, that we need, considering how computerized our lives are. And the Washoe County Recorder, for example, has been using this for several years now. Yeah, for, to, to record marriage licenses, right? And it's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, backbone technology that most people will never have to see or really understand. It will be used um, in the background of your apps and your computer systems and your banks and your hospitals and everything else. Um, and so the, for, the, for the general public, they're not really going to have to think about it, but um, it will be um, a new way to keep track of their records. Okay, so what does this mean for Nevada? 
Well, for Nad Nevada, it's been an incredible economic development opportunity, and I think it's been successful. What we tried to do was create a um, statutory and regulatory structure that was friendly to um, this new emerging technology and those businesses that are going to operate in that front. And we've seen companies come to this state because of that that that. Uh, that statute, right? Recognizing that Nevada knows what blockchain is, supports it, recognizes it, um, isn't going to um, tax it differently or treat it differently than other businesses, knowing that um, our laws are on the books and so that um, our court system will, will recognize transactions conducted over a blockchain, um, offering some stability to business to um, ensure that they know that they're safe operating here in this space. And that's what it's been. And we've seen companies, not just Blockchains LLC, but hundreds of other companies either start here or, or, or locate here um, as a destination for this technology. Are you seeing more growth in that? We are, and we're seeing um, new uh, new applications. So just recently, um, you know, a, a bank in Southern Nevada announced that it was going to be um, the holder of um, the fiat that was backing a stable coin. Um, this is again in the more in the crypto space, but um, we're seeing growth in this in in this. Um, industry and in this ecosystem, both in financial, financial technology and other applications. Um, and, you know, these are, um, these are good paying jobs in the technology sector that are supporting our economy and it's been a tremendous success. Um, I know that Circa is taking uh, uh, digital currency. Mm -hmm. Are there other gaming institutes or other companies that are uh, looking at uh, uh, taking cryptocurrency? I think they're all looking at it in one way or another, right? I think there's still uncertainty over what to um, what to do with it, right? Do you hold on to it? Is it the volatility that's the problem? Well, yeah, if you accept uh, a cryptocurrency that then deflates in value uh, the next day um, because it's not pegged to a fiat, um, it's not a stable coin, then um, ultimately your, what you sold yesterday is now worth less than, than you sold it for. So, or um, potentially Or a potentially lot more. more, right? <laughs> and, 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 that's, and that's the challenge that people are facing, and I think everyone's trying to understand exactly how to deal with that. Um, but I, I know it's being looked at um, in a lot of different applications at this point. I have not heard anybody saying bring back the gold standard for <laughs> cryptocurrency yet. All right, let's take another break. We'll be back with Ben Kikeffer after this timeout. Enjoy exceptional value and a comfortable atmosphere at the all-new Nevada Steak at Tamarack Casino. Great food, fine wines, and delectable desserts. Ooh, you good times at Tamarack. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything, from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. Enjoy exceptional value and a comfortable atmosphere at the all-new Nevada Steak at Tamarack Casino. Great food, fine wines, and delectable desserts. Ooh, you good times at Tamarack. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator Ben Kiekheffer. Um, you just completed your last term at the legislature. You're still a senator until the next election cycle. What's next for Ben Kiekheffer? Yeah, still figuring that one out, Sam. Um, I, you know, love my wife and kids, and spending more time with them might be a really good choice at this point. Um, and you know, the 
the, the, the political winds are um, blowing in a, a bit of a cyclone right now. So, um, you know, I'm sort of sitting back and waiting to make decisions. I have no immediately, I have no immediate plans. Um, there are some that have made the transition from the Senate to the Assembly. Um, is that anything that might have been a thought in your mind? No, I think I'm wrapping up my legislative career. Really? Yes. Okay. So, I, I mean, you work for McDonald Carano, mm -hmm. uh, which is a major law firm. I think it would be fairly easy for you to move into a lobbying role. Do you have any desire to do that? You know, I'm not sure if I want to walk the halls and, and lobby on a full-time basis. Um, look, I'm interested in staying engaged in um, public policy, in um, solving problems for our state, for working with um, groups that are facing challenges, and I'm sure I can find a way to do that. but. Um, you know, I've also got a cooling off period. I can't go be a lobbyist in the legislature in the next legislative session. We passed that um, during my time in the in the legislature, and I think that that's a good policy so that people don't just start churning. Um, so you've had an amazing career. I mean, you know, you were a, a reporter mm -hmm. uh, for the Rainier Gazette Journal. Uh, you were a spokesman uh, for the governor's office, uh, health and human services. I mean, you have a broad swath of experience beyond l just legislative. I'm happy with what I've done. I think I've always tried to do things that were interesting, um, and uh, I always tried to do them with uh, integrity and um, and in a way that I can be proud of when I walk away. And um, I'll, that'll be true with my legislative service as well. And you will be back on Nevada Newsmakers before your service ends this time around. Sounds Thank good. you always for being here. I Thank appreciate you, it. I appreciate and we'll it. be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts. And now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian. And at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Kenny, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.